Custer allows a view. Welcome everyone here and at home to the January 11th Eugene City Council work session. And uh, the first item up for this evening is, uh, since uh, the new year started, our first opportunity for committee reports and items of interest from the Mayor, City Council, and City Manager. And I'll start off with some items. I just want to say once again, um, thank you to staff and everyone who was involved with the State of the City. I appreciated the effort and I love the opportunity to thank so many who do so much for the city. And I also had the chance to enjoy the State of the County and the State of the City in Springfield. So we had a lot of, a lot of State ofs. Uh, um, I wanted you to know we received a letter from David Agnew with the Obama administration. Uh, expressing appreciation for working with our city. Uh, some of you noted in the uh, <coughs> newspaper and in communications at home that there is some um, talk about a sale of our local downtown post office. Mm -hmm. And I talked to, I wanted you to know that I've talked to Congressman DeFazio's office. He has called personally, but they're also sending a letter asking them to, encouraging them to rethink this. So hopefully, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that will be helpful. I wanted to remind people that next Monday, a week from today, is uh, Martin Luther King Day. And uh, there's a little shift in the um, NAACP uh, walk. Um, they're going to start at 9.30 from the Mashofsky Center and walk from the Mashofsky Center to the Halt Center. So it's a little different route than usual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's at 9.30. There's also, I think, some kind of celebration at 4 o'clock at the Halt that day, too. So just put both of those on your, for you to think about. And I hope everybody at home will think of participating. I um, <coughs> uh, went to hear our legislative delegation on Saturday. And uh, they, they talked about the upcoming session and a lot of conversation about Measure 66 and 67. And I want to remind people to please vote. And with that, I will turn it over to Mike. Thank you. Mary. I was just looking this over here myself. <clears throat> um, since our last opportunity to do this, I had uh, an opportunity to attend the, <clears throat> the press conference that was held by the police department with regard to property crime. Uh, that they held out at the Second Chambers building to talk about data-led policing in their new efforts to try and address property crime. And I just wanted to compliment staff, certainly, and, and uh, the police chief and, and his department heads for, for their efforts to try and be innovative in the way they deal with property crime and to try some new things and get their thinking out of the box to try and, and, and use technology to our advantage in this. And I thought that was really great. I was really impressed with that. I too had the chance to attend <clears throat> the, as well the state of the city and then the state of the county address, and uh, uh, I, th I think it, it uh, we ha we certainly have our challenges ahead of us this year. So, thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, I too uh, attended the trifecta <coughs> of state um, <laughs> addresses, and mm -hmm. um, it, it was good to kind of get that mm -hmm. all-encompassing view. And what it, what pleased me is uh, the number of times we talked about partnerships and collaborative efforts and working together. I think that <coughs> is a real step forward um, for all of us. Uh, the goal-setting session, which we had last week, I thought was very productive. Um, I think that was a good opportunity for... Uh, we as counselors and the mayor and the senior executive staff to begin the process of talking about what we're going to do in the coming months, particularly right. around budgets. It's going to be very difficult, and I think the more brain power we apply to it, the better the better off we will be. Um, the uh, West Eugene uh, Corridor Study Committee met uh, at the LTD downtown site, um, and uh, I would encourage folks, if they're in the uh, area of the LTD bus station downtown, there's a regular uh, room down there where they have display materials and information about that, um, that group. And they're continuing to meet. They're still probably a year away from a decision, but the process is becoming much more expansive, and they're really trying to reach out to many more people. And then uh, finally, also, I was at the property crime uh, news conference, and I talked about that at the last meeting, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I do uh, encourage us to really take a look at that because it's what really affects people probably as much as any other kind of crime. Thank you. Betty. Thank you. Um, first, I have a lot of things, but uh, the town hall, which was 
at the, at the, in the city council chambers on Saturday was very well attended, and I thought that all of our legislators did an excellent job of answering questions and presenting material. I think we can be very proud of that whole bunch. Um, there was some hostility from the audience, but they handled it extremely well. Mm -hmm. the, um, well, the state of the county, I've, uh, Chair Sorensen recognized uh, con former Congressman Weaver for his achievements, and I, it was well-deserved recognition. I thought that was excellent. Another thing that happened at the state of the county was they gave awards to people who completed the school on the government school in the county, something I still think we should do. And um, I think the first... I think the first session could very well be about what the Charter permits us as council to do and doesn't permit us to do. It would be the more people we could inform about that, the better, because people, some people think we could do anything if we really wanted to. Um, about tasers, I've heard a lot about tasers lately, and I want I have a question about that. Is it possible for us to declare a moratorium for the council to declare a moratorium on tasers so we work on the policy um, the the council I should address that by memo thank you I would like to, I would like to know <laughs> about that um, another thing that has come up but this was one person but it's typical of a lot of things um, the lack of flexibility when it comes to things to rules like fences um, a person who lives at the end of lives at a place on 28th where cars coming down Jefferson shine the lights directly into their house wanted to put up a six foot fence and I guess the rules don't allow that he was told but I think we should have enough flexibility that if there's a special reason to violate <clears throat> some of our standards staff could just say okay and I wonder if there's any way we can achieve that. If we don't ha currently have it, is there any way we can build in flexibility? I know we talk about flexibility for developers, but I think private citizens on their homes, there should be some flexibility, too, if there's a situation where the rules interfere with what's logical for that particular location. So I'd like an answer to that. Um, Parking committee hasn't met anymore, and, and I thought we were supposed to meet again, mm -hmm. and uh, we haven't yet brought any recommendations to council. And I just heard that there are now parking meters that take credit cards. I didn't even know that was happening. And the complaint I had about it was that not only that it's there, but that they're so high that short people can't reach mm -hmm. it. And I, I don't know who approved getting those and whether we purchased them or whether they're rented. But or loaned or what um, about the post office Nashville has a art art gallery in a former post office bye that's all goodbye <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving <laughs> Andrea no you yeah. can't Betty not yet um, well, I'm glad to be back from break it's nice to get back on a routine I attended the state of the city that was only when I could could work into my work schedule and I felt like it was a really uh, well attended or um, affair um, Council retreat, I thought, was good time, uh, well spent. Uh, I went to the town hall also, and it was very well attended. My IGR, um, we are going to be meeting on what our priorities are the 27th. Yes. So it's on our agenda. And El Rapid doesn't meet until tomorrow. But what I did want to talk about for a minute was um, I've been attending some of the um, use of force subcommittee meetings, and one of the conversations I heard, or actually it was at the Peace Police Commission meeting that I heard, that there was, um, they amongst the commission members were looking at how to capture um, on the subcommittee levels the comments and the notes from um, the meetings. Even though there's no decisions being made, there's a lot of really rich conversation and they were wondering, and they were talking to them about how they are looking for a little webcam and little recorders. And so what I would like to propose to you all is um, perhaps helping the police commission and the CRB and then a mere set of um, for the Human Rights Commission and the Sustainability Commission for their subcommittee meetings audio equipment for them to be able to uh, capture those conversations and if people want to buy since there's no minute takers for any of the subcommittee meetings is kind of the, bo the bottom line and so if we took that money out of um, council contingency then they could own those the staff would own them 
and that if people wanted copies, they would they could pay for copies of the discs or the CDs um, themselves, like they do now when they want to purchase, um, you know, any of our material that we have. I so, second that. Just um, food for thought, and they're going to get to me exactly what the packages look like, so they'll have a dollar number. But that's um, what I what I was hoping to get some support for. George. Um, <coughs> thank you. Yeah, that's a great idea. I've been hearing the same comments mm -hmm. from a lot of the subcommittees mm -hmm. that, that I've been going to, mm -hmm. um, and also from members of the public yeah. too that want some f record. Uh, <coughs> uh, speaking of the police commission, last Wednesday I went to the. Uh, use of force subcommittee uh, that's reviewing the taser policy and they're making really good progress they're they're taking their time with it which is good and that's that's causing a little frustration because they're going to review the whole police operation manual and they've been spending an awful lot of time on the tasers but that's okay because it's real important a lot of the other ones will be almost like pro forma reviews and they'll buzz right through them and so it's really good that they're taking all this time and uh, I don't want to predict when they'll be done, but I, I think that they're, they seem to be wrapping it up, and then they'll present the material to the police commission, and we'll discuss it there, and then we'll I imagine we'll be presenting it to the full council. Don't know exactly when, but they're Sweet. almost done, I think. Uh, on Saturday, I went to a human rights commission retreat. It was a very good grounding session for eight of the new commissioners who were there. I think I was the only old hand other than staff. Um, that was good, and we got all the committee and liaison assignments, so they're all re ready to go and raring to go. And uh, today I met with, uh, I attended a meeting with that uh, two of the budget, uh, citizen budget committee members had with the uh, planning staff to discuss uh, a few remaining concerns about loan number two for the BEAM project. and. Uh, all, all the, uh, I guess I'd have to say worst fears were addressed very well, I think. We've been very conscientious in <coughs> making sure that the city will not uh, come out badly on this one. And I'm, satis I'm, I'm satisfied. I'll be voting for the loan approval t later this evening. Thank you. Jennifer? I'll pass. Later. Okay, George. Well, in addition to the three state of uh, functions uh, this past couple of weeks. Uh, I too went to the uh, press conference out at the uh, second chamber for sort of the police department <coughs> and it is a good idea. It, <coughs> long story short, it's, it enables the, the officers to concentrate on the areas that are active in crime at the time and it moves from, from place to place and it allows the officers to take a look at that information received and, and actually concentrate on those areas. Um, I think Friday night is the Springfield Chamber of Commerce annual dinner that I'll be going to. Um, the 22nd is the Eugene Chamber uh, annual awards dinner, and the 28th is the ELCOG awards dinner. So it's going to be a busy month. This is what, what I refer to as the rubber chicken dinner circuit time of the year. <laughs> so you can hit all those, uh, all those uh, uh, banquets. <clears throat> and then a uh, little personal note, pat myself on the back. Friday the 15th, I turn 60. Right. Hey, happy birthday. Birthday, George. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. So the Eugene Council a cappella group will sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> he keeps trying to get us to do that. Oh, no, I can't, can't get the group to do that. <laughs> Who's going to pay the royalty? So, <laughs> right. Uh, happy New Year, everybody. Uh, if you didn't know it, today's date is actually a palindrome. 011110. Oh, Backwards yeah. and forwards, right. certainly. Sure. No trivia. Um, <laughs> I thought of that all <laughs> night. <laughs> well, I wrote it down. And went, oh. That was big trivia. <laughs> <laughs> this is my my last meeting as uh, council president, so I wanted to thank you all and the staff for making my job relatively easy. Uh, I too made it to our city, state of the city, but also the state of the city for Springfield. It was in the Wildest Theater, which is really a really great venue. Mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. and, um, it's a nice venue, community asset, and, and Springfield did a really nice job. And one of the things they did that I thought was really cool was they did a slideshow that went really quickly, and it was just a couple of minutes long, but it actually encapsulated everything that happened in Springfield almost from the government, city government standpoint in like five or seven minutes, and it was really well done, and hats off to... Uh, um, Neil, Neil Dottie for yep. putting that together, but it really, I think it really works. It's a yeah. good visual 
representation of what happened in a whole year. Um, yeah. Hard to do, I think. Uh, I also went to the last Civil War at Matt Court uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, for basketball. The, the new arena is progressing. It's really close to my house, so I see it all the time. All the concrete work is done, and they're working on the roof, and then pretty soon they're going to start enclosing it. Um, so that's working along. Um, I'm also eager, as George is, to see the police commission complete their work and get that um, recommendation done so that we can move on with that <coughs> policy as well. And then on Wednesday, I'll be um, I'll be participating by phone. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of items. Uh, tomorrow afternoon is the Boards and Commission training for new uh, members. Uh, I'll be in the Friendly Area Neighborhood meeting on the 21st next week. Also, all of you invited on the 21st to the Fire and EMS Awards Ceremony. If you've had a chance to go to that in the past, it's a, a nice part of their tradition. Mm -hmm. Alcog Appreciation Dinner is coming up. Uh, our goals follow-up work session is on the 23rd, and that will be, as you might remember, places where we'll be asking you to make some decisions around some of this information. So I, I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be good. <coughs> and then just lastly, if you were, read the article in the paper about the um, uh, Veterans Administration's uh, plan for locating in uh, the Eugene Springfield area. I think there was kind of an unfortunate quote in there about uh -huh. the city, and so we're following <laughs> up with that, <laughs> kind of, and um, trying to find out. So where did that uh, really come from? And so we're f we're following up on that just to let you know on that. So thank you for doing that. <clears throat> so I uh, while Alan, while Alan mentions that uh, later this evening you're going to be voting for the new council president and. Um, uh, Vice President, and I just uh, want to thank him for his service this year. I think we all do, and for Mike for his serving as Vice President. Thank you both very much. <clears throat> and just to final, uh, finalize that uh, comment that uh, Betty made about the meters, I did have three people come up to me and say, it's not only that they were short, but the meter requires that you be able to be tall enough to look down at it. Mm -hmm. It's not, you can't look get on your tiptoes and look straight at it you have to be able to to look down on it so e so even if you stretch yourself and you're short you can't get yourself in a position where you can actually um, see oh, what yeah. it says so just just for information's sake I, there I heard similar comments mm -hmm. me too so so there you go perhaps not that meter <laughs> And for some people, it's not uh, any meter. Right I, right. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Not I know. Any meter. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy New Year! Hand out credit cards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're ready to go on to the work session items. Uh, the first one: uh, downtown projects. City manager. Thank you, Mayor. And I'll just give a brief introduction and then turn it over to Susan and Amanda to kind of walk us through. Uh, a, really a, a discussion and and what we're wanting to do is continue to listen to you as we move forward because we will be bringing back some recommendations in the next 30 days or so uh, based on all the conversation feedback we've been receiving from you as well as into the community you might remember a little bit again where this started just a brief history we um, Gosh, it was probably in the summer or the fall we had come to the council to talk about urban renewal. And uh, what you said was, you know, that's a good discussion, but what we really want to do is have a broader discussion about downtown. What is it we're trying to accomplish in downtown? And eventually we will need to have that discussion around urban renewal, but we've been um, working our way through that whole conversation. A big piece around the downtown is uh, in the sense of jobs and economic development uh, and public safety and, and all of those kinds of things. In addition to a work session, which we'll be bringing back some recommendations, there's also a downtown public safety work session coming up, which we will talk specifically about some downtown um, public safety uh, initiatives that uh, Chief's task force has been putting together, so that will also be coming back as part of a conversation that Pete and Susan have been working with. There's also going to be an additional work session on downtown parking, so that will also be a, a continuing part of the discussion. So there's several related work sessions in the next uh, 30 plus days. So I'll turn that over to Amanda. John. I apologize. May I jump in here and just say, is there is our subcommittee in advance of that next work session? Yeah, that's what I want to know. 
Uh, actually, we believe that the subcommittee made a recommendation that we were going to bring back to council. So what we're doing on, I think it's tentatively scheduled for February 17th, is bringing the subcommittee's recommendation to the full council. Maybe I can catch up with the two of you after the meeting and make sure we're... Mm -hmm. I, okay. Mm -hmm. We need another meeting before then we can do it. We did. Well, I, I thought that was our agreement. Yeah. We'd be happy to bring the subcommittee back in <laughs> yeah. together. So. All right, Amanda. Thank you. Good evening. Well, the discussion tonight is part of your larger conversation about economic development and the community's economic health and bringing together your two fundamental goals to foster a safe and vibrant downtown and to boost the local economy. In December, you did an initial review of projects, and now we're here to listen to your discussion of funding options of these projects. Today I'll briefly go over the background of where we've been and then provide a summary of the funding options for you to use in your discussion and then I'll review the timeline. Mm -hmm. You'll have the remaining amount of the work session for your discussion. In October we moved forward with four near-term strategies. Those were to create jobs and support redevelopment, to ensure that everyone feels safe downtown to make parking and parking alternatives easy and available, and to support a vibrant mix of attractions and amenities. So we have these eight projects that are intended to implement the strategies. And again, we reviewed these with you in December. We also presented these projects at two open house events last week, and we provided the information online. We did receive comments at the events and online, and we provided a summary of those and the specific comments in, in a packet on Friday. And you do have an additional comment that was posted to the forum at your place. As a result of your December discussion, we did adjust the projects, some of the projects. For the Arts and Entertainment District, we made two adjustments. First, we heard your concern over the estimated amount for the purchase of the Butterfly parking lot from Lane County. And we also heard your interest in helping the farmers market uh, address their space needs. We provided a summary of our work with the farmers market in your packet for today. And although we did remove the large ticket item of purchasing the, the lot from the county from the project, park blocks improvements are still proposed within the Arts and Entertainment District project. And we can, will continue to work with the farmer's market to find a solution. Second, we heard your interest in park uh, pocket parks, so we've added that idea to this project. For parking, we heard your interest in limiting the amount for rebranding, which we've done. Additionally, the estimate for free parking is now reflective of free on-street parking. Lastly, BEAM has proceeded on track, and tonight you're scheduled to take action on their financing plan. So no funding options for this project were provided in your packet. A number of these other projects will be on your tentative schedule, and I'll review those when we get to the timeline. So for tonight, uh, you requested that we talk about funding options, and this is what we'll be doing. We started by doing some brainstorming. <laughs> that'll be a good slide not to like having a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> and some an outtake real to me. Some oh. whiteboard drawing. And we came up with some options as a starting point. They roughly fall into these five categories and two qualifiers for this list. These represent ways to pay for the city portions of these projects. And while partnership opportunities will be crucial to the success of this project of these projects, they are not part of this list. And this is just a starting point, and we assume that you'll have some more ideas to add to the list from tonight's conversation. So to help you get started with your discussion, I'll describe the 12 tools within these categories and provide general advantages and disadvantages. We'll start with the general obligation bond. This is a voter-approved bond that's repaid with property taxes. Examples include parks and open space bonds or the street re repair bonds. A GEO bond provides a new revenue source, and the community seems to be familiar with this funding mechanism. However, the outcome is unknown as it requires a vote, and it can reduce the capacity to issue debt for other projects. 
Option number two is a self-supporting bond. This is a bond that's repaid from non-property tax revenues and used to essentially allow a private party to access tax-exempt interest rates with repayment entirely from the private party. A self-supporting bond would provide access to lower interest rates for a private party. On the other hand, it's not an existing program and setting one up would have, uh, would have significant costs. It may also not provide enough of an incentive to make a project feasible and the tool is really good for larger projects. Funding option number three is local option levies. These are is a voter approved property tax that can pay for either operating or capital over a five to ten year period depending on the purpose of the levy. It is a new revenue source and the community seems to be comfortable with this funding mechanism. Although it's not ideal for long term expenses and the outcome is unknown and there may be other priority needs. An example of this funding option is the library local option levy for operations that ends next year. Okay. Funding option number four includes federal and private grants, donations, and tax credits. And these are non-city funds. However, they, the outcome is unknown as they do require a competitive process and they're available for limited types of projects. It's not going forward. Ah, there we go. Funding option number five is adjusting the downtown service district. Through the downtown service district, the city collects fees from property owners located within the district. And it is based on occupied square footage. And downtown Eugene Inc. receives and administers those funds. It's an existing program and it only would need to be adjusted. However, raising the fee would add costs that would likely be passed on to the tenants as higher rents and could incrementally add to the cost of doing business downtown. The Human Services Commission is an intergovernmental approach to funding social service programs and the city makes an annual contribution with general fund dollars. The contribution could be adjusted and direct, you could direct the funds to your priority. On the other hand, it would reduce funding for existing services and it could diminish the effectiveness of the regional priority setting model. Tools seven through nine relate to <coughs> urban renewal and have some similar features. Funding option number seven is loans from the Urban Renewal Agency that could be used for building improvements within the core area of downtown. This would be using an existing program and the funds would be recaptured as they are repaid, although there are limited funds available in the program. Funding option number eight is grants from the Urban Renewal Agency. These could go for capital and program administration, again for the core area of downtown. They would not require an increase in taxes and the project would not be burdened with loan repayment. However, it would require an urban renewal plan amendment and it would continue the redistribution of taxes. Funding option number nine would have urban renewal funds pay for certain eligible expenses that are currently paid by another fund. The other fund would then have extra cash available for council to use for your priorities. Shifting the costs would allow for no increase in taxes, but again, it would require an urban renewal plan amendment and it would continue the redistribution of taxes. Funding option number 10 is to use existing general city revenue, which is the most flexible of funds and therefore could be applicable to all of the proposed projects. It would not entail an increase in taxes, but as you know, currently the funds are limited. Funding option number 11 is to redirect city funds, specifically the, use the parking fund. We could increase parking rates, sell a parking garage. We could also use the facility reserve. Use of these funds would not entail an increase in taxes. However, funds already have other uses established and it's not new money. Funding option number 12 is a placeholder for ideas that you may come up with for today. So we did provide materials in advance that had a detailed explanation related to each project and each tool and more exhaustive pros and cons. 
We did come up with a visual representation of that information. With the funding options on the left, the projects across the top, the specific actions right below that, and the match between the projects and the funding tools in the middle shown with X's. So overall, this is not a quickly digestible picture, but what it does show is that not every tool works for every project and that we're still exploring opportunities, as you can see from the last line, that's a placeholder for today. And one of these blown up is at your uh, place. So let's move on to the timeline. The Sustainability Commission will meet on January 20th to review downtown projects. Council will meet on Janu January 25th to talk about the Lane Community College project and January 27th to talk about downtown safety. The Eugene Redevelopment Advisory Committee meet, will meet again on January 28th and we'll have opportunities for additional public involvement throughout that period to get feedback on the projects and ways to pay for them. You'll meet again on February 10th to review the city manager's recommendation on projects and tools and then on February 17th to discuss parking. With that, I'll turn it over to Susan Muir. So what we thought would happen tonight is um, we, well, we heard you say that what you wanted was an exhaustive list of all of the types of fundings that we might be able to use for the priorities and the projects that you've already identified. So that's what the list is here that Amanda has gone over. So at this point, what we're going to be doing is listening closely to what you say tonight and using that information along with the information that we received at the open houses over the last week and additional information we received through public involvement. And we'll be crafting a recommendation and some suggestions for you all to look at at the February 10th meeting. So it's, it, it'll be good for us to hear what you have to say about these funding options as we go through them. So at this point, we'll turn it over to you and let you um, start the discussion. Thank you very much. Betty, you're first. Didn't even raise my hand. Either. Soon. <laughs> um, first, I have a question. If we charged, we currently charge a fee, the downtown service district, for occupied properties. If we charge that for the unoccupied properties, how much money would we get? It's not very much more. I will tell you that's one of the recommendations that's coming to you from the downtown safety task team that we're looking at, or coming to the exec team. The um, I think it brings in an additional twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year, and the whole district collects about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It would be mm -hmm. a good thing to do, I think. As for the other things, I, I'm very much more in favor of something that people get to vote on. Then, and as no secret that I don't approve of expanding the urban renewal district or increasing the debt limit. Um, I think that if we're going to spend the people's money, it's good if they get a chance to vote and say whether they think it's something we should spend it for. Grants, of course, are great. And <laughs> we don't. We used to have a grant writer, one person who just did that, but that's, that was a long time ago. I, I wonder if, you, if you've ever thought about having that position again. Are there enough people in various departments writing grants that we don't need it? We do have a lot of people spread out through the city looking for opportunities for grants mm -hmm. and writing grant applications. Well, I, w I wouldn't object to grants for anything worthwhile. Thank you. Next. Andrea? So I want to concentrate my questions on 7, 8, and 9. So with number 7, how much is left in the um, urban renewal? About $500,000. Okay. It's in the loan program. It's in the whole urban renewal. The loan program has $1.8 in okay. it. And then what do you mean when you, and maybe you said it and I just was, didn't resonate with me. <laughs> Can you elaborate on number eight and nine? How would those look? The urban renewal grants could be like for in the LCC project. Okay, so that's us giving somebody a grant, not us asking for grants to augment what's already there. That's right. Okay. And then nine, when it says shifting costs to the urban renewal agency. Can I go to the slide? Sure. Okay. So I... Oh, no, actually, let's, oh. let's, it's in their packet. But the, okay. this is one where, if, um, as Amanda said, I think if there's things that are 
um, currently being paid for out of a different fund that, that, like the parking garages would be an example. If the Urban Renewal Agency could pay off that parking debt, then there might be funds from the parking oh, okay. fund that okay. could pay for other things. Okay. Thank you. Mike, you're next. <clears throat> yeah, do, help me understand the work that's gone on so far with the potential for the VA clinic. As I recall a previous discussion, in order for us to do that well, will we still have, is it likely we will have to adjust the borders of the URA in order to make that a reality? In order to use urban renewal for the clinic site at 12th and Willamette, we would have to adjust the boundary. Has that been a part of the discussion today? <clears throat> Yes, that's a part of the VA project that's in your list that you all are moving right, right. forward. Mm -hmm. That would be a part of that, which would require a plan amendment. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, George. Well, speaking of the Urban Renewal District, uh, you know, I think as far as expanding the boundaries and expanding the debt limit, I think that would be on a case-by-case -case basis. I think mm -hmm. there would be a reason to if it met a certain threshold. And what that threshold is, is I guess up to us individually to decide at the time the project is brought forward. But I'm not totally opposed to doing that. And, you know, Taking in consideration the project, the amount, the size, everything else. And then um, and why do we even bother having number 10 general fund on there when we don't have enough money as it is anyway? So why don't we just remove that from this conversation because it's not going to happen. We, we can do that. We were trying to be exhaustive of the list. We knew some would be very unpopular and some would be more popular, so we hear your comment on that one. And I can, maybe I can just comment a little bit on that because, you know, ultimately that gets down to a priority discussion around some of the general fund. If you chose to fund something out of a, a downtown project in lieu of something else that's being funded by the general fund, then you could use those kinds of dollars as opposed to brand new dollars coming in. So, so can, can so that, you think of a, a what if right off the top uh, of your head? I'm, I'm not suggesting there's any particular <laughs> item out there. We're just trying to make sure you have all the options on the table as we have the conversation. We didn't want to preempt any particular item. I, I think George makes a good point because in this conversation and when it puts on a list, it, it, cre it creates an illusion that there's some bucket right. of money sitting in general fund that we could choose to allocate in that way. And I, I agree with you. You could, you could take something from something right. else, but it would be making a decision to not do something that we're currently – there is no there is no extra. Right. Uh, there's not mm -hmm. a pocket of money just sitting there waiting to, to find For us to pocket. figure out how to spend it. Right. 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 Jennifer. Yes, uh, speaking to the URA on number eight, how much is available in URA grants? 500000 is available within the spending limit that stands now. Okay. Do we know yet how much LCC is going to ask of us? Our estimate is the $8 million that's in the project description. Okay. And then... Uh, I believe you said that on number nine, shifting costs to the, U to the URA would require a plan amendment. Is that correct? Right. It would require increasing the spending limit <coughs> if you wanted to shift costs of above five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And is a plan amendment then a council vote or a vote of the public? Yes. It is a council vote. It's a council vote, and it, c it can be referred. Okay. I, I should know that by now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. George Brown? Um, can will we get more refined information about LCC's proposal? You're scheduled to meet and talk about the development project and that development site on January 25th. And their planners will have their whole, like basically an RFQ. They'll all be ready. They'll know. No, um, I think um, what I would say is the it's sort of the dance of development that we call it. Once we take a step, then they'll take another step, and then we'll. So um, they wouldn't want to go out and do. Nobody would want to go out and do a full entire project right now and have the um, the end product all ready to go without a site locked in, for instance. So we're taking each step as we go along here, and the first step will be the 25th when we do that. LCC will then take the next step, and we'll keep continuing to refine the project at that point. They are making a lot of really great progress. Um, they have their project manager on board who's here tonight to listen to your discussion. Um, they have their um, 
architect, I think their preliminary architect decided and selected, and their board meets on this regularly, so they're moving okay. forward. All right. Um, we uh, got a copy of this, the Urban Renewal Agency, the annual financial report, and probably not everybody has their copy, but I saw on page 25, um, equity and pooled cash and investments. And there's $11 million there. And then you go over to page 8 and it says, uh, this is unreserved fund balance which is available for spending at the agency's discretion, which means we could use it for LCC or something in Riverfront. You're looking at Sue? I'm yeah. looking at Sue, Sue yeah. Sue cuts a George. She's able to. Thanks. That's um, yeah. That's um for for both districts in the agency. So, you know, the projects have to be located within the boundaries of the district, um, and you also still have to comply with all the other restrictions of the urban renewal agency and the urban renewal district plans. So one of the plan restrictions is that you have to have a maximum indebtedness amount that would allow you to spend the money, right? And um, that's part of what, when Amanda says there's half a million dollars left to spend, that's how much we have left that we could spend under the current spending cap. And the other thing to remember is that was as of June 30th, and right. um, you know we paid off the library debt Minus December 1st, which reduced some of that Two and, and a half million, so. so yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Can I just make sure I understood that, Sue? So does that say that there's $11 million showing in the statement that our that we only have the authority to spend an additional five hundred thousand of that. That we so haven't that already that programmed we haven't to spend uh, on something else. <coughs> okay. So just to follow up on that for the public, um, part of that eleven has already been programmed for other things, is mm -hmm. what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. So even though it looks like it's there, it's it's allocated. Right, and part of that is for the Riverfront District, right. which we can't spend. On downtown. Um, on downtown. Right, correct. Okay, I just want to be clear. We had a, actually a very similar discussion at the legislative forum on Saturday where some people were looking through piles of money that they thought the s state had, and the legislators were very carefully trying to say, yes, at that given point in time, that's how much money was in the account, but it is allocated for, for other purposes so it's a very similar kind of thing Mike you second round yeah <coughs> thank you mayor very much <coughs> excuse me when I'm looking at our packet page 38 here I think attachment H <coughs> on the parking uh, I noticed the different number for rebranding and thank you for for hearing that um, and then the 300 for easy payments which I assume <coughs> having not read all of that as thoroughly as I probably should have with all these pages um, is the uh, those uh, credit card machines and other mechanical tools that will help the process of easier parking? Do I have that right? It's That's what the three hundred. It's two hundred thousand for the con access control equipment in the right. parking garages. Right. Okay. And then a hundred thousand of the other ways to make it. And the six hundred number is the previous estimation we had from the subcommittee on the cost of of meterless parking in the downtown core and that's an ongoing cost the um, the numbers listed in the preamble here talk about a thousand metered spaces in the downtown core I'm wondering if that matches up to the geography of the map we talked about in the subcommittee as well or is that a more expansive area of footprint The thousand meters are the downtown plan area, okay. and the core is oh, catch it, 427 meters. It's about half the meters is the core. So the 600,000 that's represented in the calculation for doing this isn't really that thousand spaces. It's a smaller. It's just that little piece. Just yeah, that little, piece. Yeah. Okay, just to make sure I got that right. Um, and of course, we had some discussion about those numbers, and hopefully, we'll have some more at the next subcommittee meeting to change topics a little bit with the VA. Um, uh, 
that one is particularly important to me, that we do everything we can possibly do to assist in getting a veterans hospital or downtown like it is for everybody. We've all talked about that. Um, how would – I thought the remarks in the paper were an unfortunate comment, but I would wonder how you would characterize the work we've done so far and, and uh, your sense of, of those remarks and what we could be doing to address that. Because I want to make sure we're giving that every opportunity to be put in Eugene rather than Springfield. So I was wondering if you could help me. How would you characterize what we've done so far there, what's left to go, those mm -hmm. remarks and context, that sort of thing? Uh, uh, the discussions that you've been having here have been really helpful as we move through the discussions with Peace Health on this. They've guided us greatly. So we have um, let them know that this is an important priority for us and that we are willing to help. Um, we've had a lot of questions come in re related to parking requirements, uh, the way this particular amendment may work and the timing of it and um, my conversations with peace health representatives have been that we are here to help and we want to um, find out when there's barriers find out what we need to do and move move forward on this um, we've been talking to them about their submittal package and continue to do that um, what we can contribute to that so um, we understand how important that is the council has made that clear to us and we're working on it diligently um, John mentioned that we're following up on the comment in the paper and uh, I'll be sure and close the loop with you all as soon as we do that. I can tell you that we um, regularly meet uh, – yeah, I'm not sure what to say about that because um, we're starting the conversations with the, the people that made the comment. Okay. Um, as some of the funding pieces and the approvals and everything else involved here is at multiple layers of government, is there anything that we can be doing from your perspective as electeds, interacting with other electeds at other levels of government that would be helpful in this process, at least from what you've seen so far? I'm sure there will be. Um, I'm sure there will be. I think right now everybody's per looking for sites and preparing their application packages to submit to the VA, and so I'm sure there will be opportunities um, to be helpful, and we'll keep an eye out for those. Thank you. Uh, um, can I just add one thing on the Please. parking? Yes, those meters are too tall. I can tell you. Um, I, <laughs> I was going to gonna say. <laughs> um, they will be gone in 10 days. They were a pilot program. They did not cost us any money. And um, uh, I just wanted to make sure you know that we, we hear you. We believe the same thing. We hear the same comments. Um, they will be gone in 10 days. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to make the comment. Are you done, Mike? I don't want to. Yeah, the only other thing is, are we going to do a, a other brainstorming in the part of this? Because we have another hour. I guess I'll take a third round if we're going to do that. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, we'd like to hear all. Okay. Well, so um, I, I just wanted to add to that conversation that we have, I have, and I know everybody's had conversations with mm -hmm. Mel Pine, with mm -hmm. Peace Health, and that we've let them know that we want to do everything possible for these to get the. Um, the clinic in in Eugene. You saw in the paper they have two Eugene sites that they are um, looking at. As I, I'm of the mind, actually, that somebody made an unfortunate flip remark in the midst of a conversation that ended up um, on, the, on, the, on the front of the paper. And uh, while we regret the comment that was made, we also um, uh, don't know the context in which it occurred, and uh, we want to get we want this to be successful. So that's we'll just follow up on it. Yeah. And, and just to follow up on this whole conversation, I think a, a good example of um, us really wanting to make this successful is there were some questions around parking and and uh, codes and parking requirements, and I know Susan and her team very quickly sort of closed the loop on that, clarified that. Um, there was some misunderstanding, I think, on some some parts around that, but we were able to clarify that very quickly. And so we are, um, contrary to that one remark, actually, I think we're <laughs> we're, we we're really working the <laughs> other we're really okay. working the other way mm -hmm. um, as we're trying to to work through this. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, so far, uh, what I've heard people say this, uh, this evening is, I heard Betty say that she wasn't interested in any. Um, urban renewal um, solutions. Other than that, I, I heard George over here say that he would be uh, open to expansion uh, under certain circumstances, right, George? And other than that, I've heard people, I don't know if it's gotten any, I haven't seen anybody take any, other than what Betty's comment, take anything off 
the table yet other than George's conversation, which is we don't really have anything in general fund that we can we can utilize. So that's I don't know if you need something narrower than that, but I, I know you gave the list and people have asked questions, but I haven't heard anybody um, remove any or any anybody else remove any. Chris, did you want to say something? Well, I, don't, I don't know if it's about removing anything. In fact, I think the general fund option, even if it's very um, constrained, mm -hmm. probably should be left only for the purpose that you need to at least be able to uh -huh. talk about mm -hmm. has everything been allocated the way it should be. Because if you say we don't want to mess with the general fund, you're also sending a message that we're happy with everything the way it is. We don't want to change anything or have even the opportunity to talk about changing anything. So I'd leave it on the table for that reason. But but the truth does remain. Mm -hmm. The general fund is incredibly constrained and will be constrained even more. So if we have a conversation about the general fund, it's with the understanding that it's a trade-off, mm -hmm. not just some magical addition. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> with regard to the urban renewal or uh, agent, uh, the urban renewal funding, um, for me, what I think is important is that the days of unrestricted urban renewal growth, I think, are gone. I don't think you can say we just want to increase the taxing ability or the debt limit or whatever it is for um, unknown reasons or for or for possible future development. Uh, I don't think there, there's there's a lot of comfort for that. But I I do want to leave the opportunity to have that tool in the tool belt if we can identify a very focused, very specific, uh, time-specific even, opportunity to use that. Um, for example, uh, when you talk about shifting costs to the Urban Renewal Agency, I would assume that whatever that shift was would be a specific, identifiable, ideally related to Urban Renewal District use for that money. So I'm not hearing take it off the table, but what I am hearing is you got to have a very specific, very focused, very, very uh, clear use yeah. for a specific amount of money, and, and I think that's where my comfort level would be with it. And that got a lot of other people ready to say something. So, <laughs> with that, um, I'm going to uh, Jennifer, and then Alan, and then George. Speaking of shifting costs to the URA, I am in support of that, and I'm. Most specifically to something that we talked about that you had mentioned to me before and that I see is in the materials and that is where the parking fund currently pays each year on its debt and having urban renewal take on that debt freeing up the parking garage the parking fund to then contribute to the general fund which could be used for downtown police mm -hmm. is that still on the table in the mix Okay. Well, I, I've i had plenty of time to think about that, and that just makes a lot of sense to me. We need more police downtown. Um, I do want to get a little clearer understanding of what that means to police services in my area, but um, mm -hmm. so far as in terms of shifting costs to the URA, for this particular expense, I'm very supportive of it. And I think it's a really creative idea. Alan? Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to reiterate my support f for and uh, the VA hospital. It's a very high priority. I mm -hmm. think having that in Eugene would be very good for our downtown, very good for our vets, and, um, and would be a great project, and we need to do whatever we need to do in order to get it here. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I hope we are doing everything we can. I'm sure the council's united in staying behind that proposition with the VA. Um, Notwithstanding what Chris said about the general fund, th that it doesn't really, it, it has no money in it, so it's really not an option. <laughs> um, there isn't anything I'm going to trade off at the general fund and and, and uh, allocate towards this, so uh, I just assume <coughs> remove it. I think it's uh, a red herring and kind of confuses the topic. Um, my, uh, I had a question about attachment K, which is the memo from the city attorney, Glenn Klein about what happens to the urban renewal district. <coughs> At the very end of page one, it <coughs> says, um, unless the council adopts an ordinance amending the urban renewal plan before the end of this fiscal year, June 30th, 2010, tax increment financing for the downtown district will cease. Uh, that means the tax increment financing mechanism ceases to exist, but does the urban renewal district go away? The district does not go away, and the it's tax increment financing only ceases for the downtown district, not for the riverfront district. 
And if at a later date, after June 30th, 2010, we were to do something with the Urban Renewal District, um, either expand it or uh, to include the VA hospital and, and increase the debt indebtedness level for that project in particular, um, what would be the implications of doing it after that date? Um, the statute and the Department of Revenue rules are unclear as to what happens. There's one argument that if you that you would be able to make that change, um, say next year, expand or increase the maximum indebtedness and be able to start receiving tax increment finances again. Um, but because the rules are unclear uh, and we haven't had any conversation with the Department of Revenue about trying to clarify that, um, we don't know for sure. So there's a possibility that if you don't do the amendment prior to the end of this fiscal year, that you would not be able to get tax increment financing again for the downtown district. Hmm. We under, just don't know. Okay. So under what circumstances would the base be recalculated to current, if the to the current um, level of of uh, assessment? Mm -hmm. uh, we would be a preliminary answer. I think we would be able to in essence restart the district so that you know if you didn't amend now and you amended next year there would be a way to in essence adopt a new plan the frozen base then would be what the um, assessed value is at that time so in essence you're resetting the mm -hmm. what the frozen base would be but then you would have to wait for increases in assessed value before you started receiving tax increment funds Right. I mean, it doesn't. It it kind of blows up the tax increment financing mechanism if you reset the base. Right. So, um, can you get back and find out what when it would re reset, and whether or not if we did something after the tenth, it would either reset or we could just restart it with the same base, the old base. Um, <clears throat> I can have that conversation with the Department of Revenue, but if they say. Gosh, you're right. We we never contemplated that situation. Our rules don't address it. Having them speculate as to how they might amend the rules hmm. um, won't be very comforting. But we can certainly ask them the question: um, What do they have in mind, or what would they have in mind, and then get back to you with that information. This never happened before in Oregon. Uh, no, it hasn't. Because this is all new. Maximum indebtedness was just created as a concept for purposes of Measure 50. The legislation that just passed that said, you know, my memo references this legislation went into effect January 1st of this year. So, no, we're first. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I guess as far as funding mechanisms are, are concerned, so I'd still like to hear back on what that answer is. Um, I guess in funding mechanisms, I, um, I'm not real interested in having another divisive issue about downtown projects uh, and urban renewal. I'm interested in a path of least resistance, one that um, and, and one that actually garners support as opposed to divides the community once again. So that, to me, there's a lot of mechanisms that we've sketched out here that um, can achieve same or similar results in terms of what we're trying to accomplish without um, uh, becoming divisive. So I, I'd encourage us to look closely at those mechanisms um, and and seeing how they, they could operate. And, and uh, uh, they're not necessarily the most cost-effective options that we have, but they're, they might be much more politically acceptable. And so um, the other thing I'll say about that, oh, I'm over. Next round. Okay. George Brown. Um, yeah, I, I kind of agree with the people that have already with with uh, George and Alan about the general fund. I just think that's kind of impossible to. I suppose it's a theoretical possibility we could maybe keep it on the list, but we're going to have some tough decisions at the budget committee <laughs> meetings to regarding the general fund. And I'm really opposed to to using the urban renewal for basically any of this except what's left in the funds, and because if we like to use it for parking and public safety. It's just um, if 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 the downtown district sunsetted, the city would get about nine hundred thousand dollars a year 
almost a million into the general would go to the general fund, and I don't know how much it varies from year to year of the the administrative expenses, but they can be that can be several hundred thousand dollars a year. But you wouldn't really need to spend it because there wouldn't be a district, so it, it wouldn't be a bad thing if it went away. I firmly believe that actually it would be beneficial to the city to let it just go away because it's been 50 years. But, um, however, there's still some resources left that could be used. I the, the way I feel about all these projects here kind of is that they're all interesting, some of, and they're all important. But I don't think we can do all of them. I don't think we can attack them all at the same time. And, and when we start, we try to look at too many of them all at once. It gets kind of, it gets kind of nebulous. And and I think we really need to concentrate on the Beam project, and and LCC at the pit. And if LCC, for whatever reason, hopefully it wouldn't happen. But let, if it didn't work out, then I think we need to focus on the, on the two main, the really the eyesores downtown and the problem areas downtown. <coughs> And put some of these other ones on the back burner. The the VA, yeah, that's great. But you know, we get yeah, here's the irony: we get several million dollars a year from the federal government in various grants and just outright gifts. And here we are supposed to be spending money on a government pro federal government project. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. It seems to me like most of that's up to Peace Health and the GSA or whoever handles it for the for the feds, I really don't see that the city has to be too involved in that because Peace Health will be the landlord. The, the vet's clinic is not going to own the property. They, they're they not interested in it. They're just interested in leasing. So I just don't see that as, I mean, if we can help, yes, but I, I don't think we should be spending a million or two million dollars on it. Thank you. I've got um, Mike and Jennifer, Allen, and Betty. I just wanted to say that <clears throat> I certainly understand your points, George. I, I think that the value of the VA clinic is in the number of people that would work there that would be coming into downtown, the number of, of certainly of citizens that would be served and local vets that would be served in that location and that that it can do with regard to the close proximity to a, uh, an LCC that could have a, a nursing program and all the all the uh, synergy that could happen from both of those things being in close proximity I think are, are really good for downtown even though what you did say was true about the ownership um, I, I I'm less excited about the beam project in that we have given a great deal of money to now not get the pit filled and I hope they can find tenants because I, I certainly won't want to be having the city pay extra and have to build it and then and then populate it as well we might as well just uh, gone a different route to do that so I'm I'm much more focused on the idea that making sure we do what we can for LCC to get that pit filled and do what we can to, to get the VA clinic in our downtown are really good things um, with regard to the mayor's comment about those things taken on and off the table today um, it's no secret I'm I'm as a principled issue, I'm generally disposed to not be in favor of urban renewal and tax increment financing. Um, but as Chris has, has pointed out, I think for those cases where it serves a very specific and, and easily defined purpose, I think I'm, I'm willing not to, to shoot it down so quickly. I'm willing to listen. And as Jennifer mentioned, I think that's a good idea for us to consider if we have the capacity to relieve current obligations and current debt and at the same time free up monies where we can increase downtown public safety at the same time I, I think those are, are worthwhile ways to deal with that and that's something I'd, I'd certainly want to be in favor of lastly I suppose um, in this area of downtown parking if, if we were to do what was proposed here would we be taking those meters off of the street in those areas or would we just be no longer using them Which proposal were we talking about? If we were to do as is included in the budget piece there to have the 600000 from not having metered parking in the core right there. We would, it would probably be a time-limited parking on the street. The meter heads would disappear. Okay. We'd move to Ward 4. Well, we're around the university, I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> to Ward 5. Um, <laughs> well, I was thinking that although it's just 
kind of wild, wacky, and a creative idea. I had a discussion with somebody about turning those, if we were to no longer use those, turn those into an opportunity for local artists to add to them and perhaps uh, allow them to put money in it on a voluntary basis to support local artists. But you see things like Seattle with the pigs and so forth. That could be something that could be another attractive feature of our downtown. And it's just a, a, a creative idea I thought I'd mentioned. Yeah, I've seen it or, um, by other places. Yeah. have used it, right. Yeah. Jennifer? Yes, uh, John, I wanted to follow up with my question about shifting costs to the, uh, to the URA for the police specifically. How many years consecutively can we do that? I mean, can we do that in perpetuity? Or as long, I guess, probably as long as the URA is in existence? Uh, no, what, um, and if you have some more detail, chime in, but essentially, the idea would be is for the urban renewal district to pay off the garage, freeze up the annual debt service for that, which the parking fund would no longer be obligated to pay, and then that could then be used for something else like police officers. And so, uh, Jeff, you can weigh in, but that could really be an indefinite period of time because you're you're recapturing that seven eight hundred thousand dollars indefinitely I think I would just add that it would be contingent upon the health of the parking fund so you know looking at the parking fund holistically and looking at the way um, we charge for parking and, and enforce parking is a part of the equation but right now we think it's an ongoing okay. great thanks got anything you want to add to that oh, the debt is scheduled for re uh, being paid off in 2018 uh, it's seven eight hundred thousand dollars a year until 2018 so that's when the debt would expire the mortgage would be paid off at that point and the payment would be up for indefinitely okay, okay. Alan you're next um, so George said that that the um, if the urban renewal district went away, <clears throat> nine hundred thousand dollars would come to the general fund, and all those functions would disappear. But I'm not so sure that's correct. Um, the the functions that are being done, that are being paid for by urban renewal funds, are functions that are 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 uh, broader than that, and 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 so they don't necessarily go away. Right. I think Sue actually could probably answer that one the best, or maybe not. <laughs> Who's going to take the mic? Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Larry or Curly? <laughs> well, as it turns out, a very interesting question. <laughs> Since it, uh, you're sitting right here. <laughs> so there, there's a downtown staff that is paid for uh, in part by urban renewal, and uh, those functions are broader in a sense than a specific expenditure of urban renewal funds, but all the work that's done collectively supports the urban renewal plan. I don't mean to be circuitous, but you, know, you work with downtown businesses. Some of those businesses don't end up uh, getting a loan from the urban renewal district, but they had a touch point with the, the city organization. And there's a variety of functions like that uh, that, although they are impacted by urban renewal uh, or they're funded by urban renewal, the, the connection uh, is a little bit more general. Right, so in part, you and Danny and other folks in the PD planning development staff are funded by urban renewal in bonds. Part. In part, when you have that connection with the downtown urban renewal district. That's right. Right, so, so if that $900,000 were, is that the right number? If we were to come back to uh, the city general fund, we'd still need to be paying for the staff that we have that does that kind of work. And it wouldn't be necessarily a straightforward savings, right? And this uh, is probably a question that you'd have to research and come back and answer. Right, and I think Sue's checking on the number too, or may have some. So what we'll get back to you is the definite number, and then the what what the what the dollars would actually be paid for that we know now. This is um, July eighth. Yeah. So yeah. the. Uh, Amanda, you said that LCC was looking for $8 million. I didn't quite understand your comment. Okay. Danny, would you like to speak more specifically to this? <clears throat> sure. Um, right now we're using the $8 million as kind of a placeholder. Uh, LCC is going through a feasibility analysis right now. And part of that analysis will include some cost estimates for the project. So they don't really have a true cost estimate. But right now, 
you know, the range is, you know, maybe $27, 30000000 million for that project. <coughs> as, you, as, as you know, they, they uh, secured some bond financing, some state money, they have $17 million, so there's quite a gap still to be filled. Um, we could play a role in helping them fill that gap. Of course, they're looking at other sources, federal stimulus dollar, dollars, energy dollars, um, working with the state and, and all of those things. Grants or maybe opportunities, all of those things. But those are speculative at this point, and uh, the project, the true project cost is a little bit speculative. So we really don't want to Are we going to know that when they come back to us on January 27th? On the 25th, we're actually going to be talking about the property transaction, really, and focused on how the city transfers the property, the property to LCC. And I don't anticipate that we would have um, a whole lot more detail because they're kind of in the middle of like a 90 day. So we won't know all the details by the community. And that's the Sears lot here at Pitt and the old diamond parking lot. That's correct. It's the half block. That whole half block. Okay. Um, so when I, when I got ran out of time, I was talking about funding mechanisms. And a lot of these funding mechanisms seem to need a certain amount of money for them to make sense financially because uh, of the financing costs and the admin costs associated with them are so large that you can't just go out there and do a, a bond for $100,000 because it, it would do the admin financing costs would be more than $100,000. It wouldn't make any sense. So there has to be an economy of scale associated with a lot of these different mechanisms. Um, so that means you have to put together a package of projects that are that, that add up to sufficient amount to make sense to do these use some of these mechanisms. And it also means that, that um, you need to put together a package that would be appealing. And I think it's probably not a bad idea for us to work under the assumption that ultimately whatever we do might go to a public vote. Mm -hmm. And if we take that perspective, I think it may uh, inform and may alter what, how we proceed and how we think about uh, what we're going to do. And, uh, and it would also mean that the package that we put together has to be crafted so that it entices yes votes, not just no votes. There's people who will will vote yes for things that they want, and there were people that will vote no no matter what. But you you, you have to put together a package. I think that that we would put together a package that would entice people to vote yes. And so that's that's a tough thing to do, I think. And 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 unfortunately, farmers market is one of those things, and we've temporarily yanked that out. And I'll come back to that. It is um, that kind of information coming out of the um, forums we're having where we can clearly see which which projects resonate and how how that is that going to be helpful in that discussion? Yeah, I would say um, overall the, in the um, attachment that you got by email shows what people thought of each of the projects. Um, people were pretty supportive of the projects as they're moving forward. There were a few that um, felt a little lukewarm, and we're going to take all of that information along with the information here and do just what Councilor Zelenko was talking about, which is to try and craft something to bring back that's a good package for you all to consider. So there's some helpful, but, but the projects were pretty popular. Because I remember when we did the Parks Bond, we started out with uh, it first just being an open space um, bond, and then it became clear pretty fast that we needed to bring along another part of the community and then it we we put fields with it uh, because that brought enough other folks and together that gave enough lift to, to pass the the bonds i think that's what you're kind of re what, what gives us enough lift from yes uh, yep yeah, exactly <clears throat> exactly betty you're next oh thank you um i agree with george brown that we shouldn't try to do a lot of things all at once that we should concentrate on the two spots, the beam project, and doing something about that hole across from the library. Whatever it turns out to be, LCC would be great. Um, but I think to then we can let private enterprise take care of the rest of it probably. As for the VA hospital, I think that is between Peace Health and the federal government, and uh, I think. For a lot of things, I think what we should do is remove barriers rather than mm -hmm. than uh, do it rather than helping with money. If we can remove barriers for things that ought to be there, that's good. But if we get that start, 
if a part of downtown is looking good, I think the other things will come. At any rate, I think it's better to do one thing at a time or two things at a time and do them well than to say you're going to do a little bit of everything. We could learn from a country like Nepal, which is very backward in some ways, but they were working on their sewers and they said when we finish this then we'll work on the water but they worked on one thing at a time and finished it before they started something else and I think we do too much of spreading out thank you George Brown um, thanks I, I just wanted to make one more comment about you know why I'm opposed to the idea of um, Increasing the debt limit for the urban renewal, the downtown urban renewal district, and really it kind of applies to the riverfront too. If you read the plans, they're about as vague as you can get. They are not project specific whatsoever in one in, in even one detail. There, it's like for whatever connections to the river, elimination of conditions of slum and blight. Uh, the, the list goes on and on, but there's nothing. It doesn't say we will build a library. We will build an entertainment center. We will build a veterans hospital. We will build a public theater. We will, you know, we will build a park space downtown. We will build this housing project downtown. And then at the end of 10 years or 15 years when the obligations paid off, boom, that district goes away. And you start another one. This is how they're meant to be used. Ours has never been used that way. It's the district was formed in 58, 1958. Um, they got serious in 1968. That's when they started getting money from the federal government. Those were outright grants. Those weren't from tax increment. That came a little bit later. Um, it was 12 million bucks. Half a million for the stu preliminary studies and 12 million dollars. That was a lot of money in 1968. <laughs> so, my, but my point is, you know, it never ends. And the, and the general fund and the city never sees the benefit from from the project. Um, yes, the assessed value uh, has gone up in the in the downtown district and the riverfront district, but I'm just not sure that it was really worth it to have the, have the district. Certainly, good things came of the use of urban renewal funds, the the Hope Center and and the library are fabulous, but those initially were were bond issues. They, those were not totally financed by urban renewal. They were helped generously in both cases by urban renewal funds, but those were not specific urban renewal projects. So really the downtown plan, you know, if you, you want to get project specific, you got to basically just tear that thing up and start all over again because it's, it's just about, you know, go online and, and pull it out and read it sometime. It's about as vague as, as you'll ever want to get. Thank you. We've got Jennifer and Andrea and Chris. Uh, yes, Alan really spoke to where I was going with this because we seem to be avoiding numbers one and three. But I, I really appreciate what he put out there. But my other question that's important for me in that discussion is who else would be going out for bonds and levies? Mm -hmm. We've had those spreadsheets in the past, and I found them to be really helpful. You know, the school districts or um, the county or other, any other entity. And um, I think that has helped us make some decisions in the past. And then I'm really kind of curious about um, Betty's comment about removing barriers, and I'm just trying to think off really quick. Um, so, so for example, if we removed the barrier of SDCs, that, though, is coming out of as opposed to giving them money out of the URA. Those are really two totally different pockets of money. Mm -hmm. How, what would you recommend on that? I mean, if it were an either or, would you recommend foregoing the SDCs and not spending the money out of the URA or? I don't think we have enough information to know whether or not one would make a difference to the project or not, which is why we're sort of starting the discussion of we've, uh, we need to have all the tools in order to help this, which, which is bringing into the district would be one of the tools which we put on the table for you to talk about tonight. But I don't think we have enough information yet to know what would be the best way to 
continue to remove barriers or continue to try and support that project. I think, um, like I said, your discussion here to say you want to support it is important, and then working with them to find out what those barriers are is really important. So whether it's from zoning code issues to financing mm -hmm. issues to um, legislative issues, whatever it is, we'll continue to identify those, but we don't have that level of detail yet. And I suppose if we decide to not increase or make the motion that Glenn needed by the end of this fiscal year, then it really wouldn't matter. The only choice we would have would be to remove barriers. Is remove correct? other barriers other than financial barriers? Other than what the city could help offset, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Andrea? Um, well, I do appreciate all the comments that have gone around the table. I, I do like a lot of stuff that Alan says. I just wanted to weigh in kind of on the VA issue. Um, for me, I, you know, we're here for a moment in time, and those things that come to us, we don't really have a chance of choice to say, we'll come back later because we're working on this. So I really want you to do whatever you can to continue that conversation and be a support to the VA. To me, it's not only... Um, it may not be our charge, and it may be a conversation between one organization and another, but I think that we, we're an important part of this community, and I think that we need to be supportive in as many ways as possible. And it really, to me, when I think about it, it's economic development mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. access for veterans. I mm -hmm. Veterans right now have to get in a van and go to Roseburg or go mm -hmm. to Portland to get their care. Mm -hmm. and Or they, go, they can get some services here, very minimal services. I mean, you know, of course, the other organization, health care organizations will take care of them, but really their primary care homes are, you know, 100 miles in one way and 80 miles in another, you know, and I think that we, you know, just as part of the community, you know, when I think about the different um, constituencies I have and, and, and when I think about a lot of the statistical stuff that we see about the people who are homeless, a lot of them are veterans, and I would really hope that this is one way that we could help kind of bridge that gap for them. Mm -hmm. Because you know they're part of our community too, and they've served our country. And I think that we, you know, we as a city and us as people <laughs> owe them our thanks, and that we need to do what we can to um, encourage that dialogue and continue that. I just want to add something to that because I think I'm hearing two things here. One is a question of how we use the limited financial resources we have, and another is about whether we should be trying to help two or three projects at a time. I think it's possible that those ideas can come together because you could be actively trying to pursue and encourage and do what we can with all three of those projects, but you could look at those different ways of, of approaching them so that you give it a push, you give it help, but in some cases it may be financial, in others it may be some other, two, other kinds of non-financial or differently financial tools that we could aim in that direction. So it doesn't, it's not the same, it's not the same lift for every one of them, or there may be some balance of lifts that would make that all possible. Because I, I mean, I take what Betty says well, that it takes a lot of work on the part of our department to work on, on any particular project, and, and having a lot of things going simultaneously really is, creates some, some um, challenges for us, but uh, it depends on how we approach them and how much goes in into each one of them. But for me, I think all three of these are here now. We're committed to, or more, more or less, committed to two out of the three, and um, and the third one is uh, is an opportunity of time and uh, mm -hmm. now. And and as Andrew so eloquently said, it has a lot of meaning for. Um, the well-being of people in our community as well as our economic future and we that's another goal that we are working on with all of these things so I I just think it's a way of you look at the statements they are not necessarily in contradiction to each other Chris you're next thanks um, in, in addition to the conversation about the types of funding mechanisms it's also interesting to for me at least to recognize that sometimes when the funding mechanism becomes controversial it's because there's a lack of clarity around what this funding mechanism is being used for. Mm -hmm. Is it an appropriate use? So it's like, um, would you would you be willing to use this kind of money? Well, it depends on what you want to use it on. If you want to use it on this, it's okay. If you want to use it on that, it's not okay, and it could be any one of these. And that's why you tried to do kind of this piece of it. But even this is not really zeroing down in, 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 in terms of being helpful that way. 
it occurs to me that where we start going in different directions is when we get beyond the appropriate use of the city's role in supporting infrastructure mm -hmm. versus going beyond infrastructure. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure, I may be wrong, but I'm guessing that most people at this table do, do not object to the city's use of funds to support the development of infrastructure. Where the debate becomes is what is infrastructure? We probably won't disagree that police and fire and roads are probably infrastructure, but for example, I may, be con I may consider certain aspects of public safety to be infrastructural, whereas other folks might not. Um, somebody might consider parking to be part of infrastructure, uh, and, and others may not. Um, the degree to which we would support the construction of a, of a veterans uh, center. Is, is removing barriers an infrastructure discussion? Is supporting the construction of the actual building an infrastructure discussion? That's where it gets nebulous. That's what we have to work out. So it's almost difficult to talk about the specific funding mechanisms when we still lack clarity around, well, what are we going to use it for? Is it, is it what we're defining as an appropriate use of the money? Um, that's why there needs to be a lot more conversation about exactly what we're talking about. Um, to my earlier point, it's not that I am for or against a mechanism. It's give me the specifics about how that mechanism would be used and for what purpose. Um, and, and then it's much easier for me to talk about it. I go all the way back to the, to the um, AIC where you had under background your four basic strategies and the quick list under that. We need to talk about which of those we're viewing as appropriate uses for a city's involvement financially mm -hmm. and which are not. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, 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 we're not really having that conversation. We've already run past that conversation to the how do we spend the money. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I guess, the part that, that I want to take the step back so we can have more people saying. on board <laughs> as we have the discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alan. Um, I had a question about the farmer's market, and um, it's, it's unclear to me. It says it's removed from this package. I assume that's temporarily, but can you explain what's going on with the farmer's market? Sure. So if you look at the Arts and Entertainment District attachment, it's attachment I, and the chart on city actions um, at the December work session, your AIS provided a line item for purchasing the, the uh, butterfly lot from the county for $4.1 million, and that does not appear here on attachment I. Um, with the idea that we would pursue non cash alternatives, a property swap with the county, or alternative expansion areas that that didn't include expanding north into the county-owned property. So more out-of-the-box thinking about what else we might do besides blowing up the butter butterfly, buying, buying and blowing up the butterfly lot? Right. <laughs> so exploring use of the Free Speech Plaza, closing 8th Avenue, those kinds of things. Right, because we looked at whether or not you could just put the farmer's market on the butterfly lot, but it's so deeply graded that it's really problematic right. for especially mobility. Right. Accessibility issues exist right now. Mm. I remember when said so what, what is it specifically you guys are doing with that? What are you doing? We've started uh, speaking with representatives at the county and we've also been talking with the new uh, director at the farmers market. Because one of their impediments to growing the farmers market that they said, the farmers market people said, was the space was too limiting. That's right. Okay. Well, just to add to that conversation, they, uh, over the <laughs> years that we've been having this discussion, they have not been of one mind themselves, and so we've been trying to work with them to, to get to, not to try to make up their minds for them about what they wanted, but to get them to a place where they have a, a plan and a vision and, and enough people are on board to move, to move forward. So that's been the challenge, I think. But I actually think we've been, this has been going on a long um, time. It'd be nice to try to put some kind of timeline on it and see if we can get to a to a end game with the um, what the farmer's market might be in its next evolution in Eugene. Mm. Deadlines work. Yeah, they yeah. do. <laughs> Especially if it's got something in it that uh, yeah. might. I, I agree with both of those comments. I said Every time we talk about this, I think that's that's very near my office downtown, and I'm there often on weekends. And if there's anything I think we should be doing with our downtown, it's leveraging what already works. And it's really clear that that really works and is a great draw in our downtown. 
And I'd be in favor of us doing whatever is possible, and that leads me to another part of the discussion. I don't want to get too far off on yet another thing we could be doing downtown and add to Betty's list. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but, um, <laughs> but before I was on council, I saw a presentation at council by Professor Mark Gillum from the university talking about a, a, a central park in Eugene that extends from the park blocks down to the federal building. Now, as I understand it, all of that is bare land except for three buildings that are there right now, and they're all three or one-story buildings. I, I never heard a good – I never had anybody tell me why that wasn't a good, great, or feasible idea. I'm one that still was very attracted to that idea. And I'm wondering if that came up in an, uh, any part of the discussions here about downtown the, 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 when, the, with the public involvement pieces and the – Actually, the idea didn't come up during the public mm. forums. So Those an idea that's been discussed in the community continuously since it was first uh, brought up by Professor Gillum and others. Uh, there are a variety. It's you know that's a property acquisition task that we right. have to dig into. Uh, that actually is in two uh, urban rural districts. <coughs> uh, if that was a source of funds uh, to be looked at, but. Uh, there are some challenges there to acquiring properties from multiple property owners. Well, I must say that one of the things that, that they put forward as kind of the basic underlying proposition is that if you use public monies to build the infrastructure of the park, that what you get is development around it. And I think if you look at our park downtown, you see that. Um, it also simultaneously offers more opportunity for space for the things that are already working downtown for a farmer's market and for other things. And I have to tell you, I don't know if it's a real part of the discussion at all, but it's one that I'm real interested in. So I, I don't know how we add that to the discussion, but it's something that I'd be interested in talking about some more. Betty? Thank you. Yes, I'm for any kind of parks anywhere, but downtown especially right now. But uh, the, about the farmer's market, are we still charging them money for the parking spaces they use? Um, Jeff, you want to answer that question? We do. Mm -hmm. uh, next year, uh, unlikely. They found that it's cheaper to pay for downtown space here than fairgrounds. We're, we're talking to them. But we shouldn't be charging them. That, that goes along with removing impediments, and it is the best thing we have downtown. Currently, it's the thing that's working, and we are actually charging them money, and regardless of whether they'd have to pay more some other place, we should almost pay them to be there rather than charge them to be there. Yeah. What, what parking spaces are we charging them? On the street. On the street. And we shouldn't. Oh, the ones on 8th? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alan, you're next. Oh, um, I, I, I like what you're what, what Mike said and what Betty said, I was, I was thinking the out-of-box things about where to put the farmer's market, um, you know, it doesn't, it works in part because it's downtown and in part because it's attached to the Saturday market, but if there were a, um, another location at a, a nearby park that we created that could incorporate um, overhead structures that provided rain protection, um, that could also potentially work as a good solution to a farmer's market as well, and that could be incorporated into a new park, and new pocket park. And, and uh, so that's kind of the out-of-the-box thinking that I was thinking about. Mm. Jennifer? Yes. Uh, well, actually, they could probably be then adjacent to the new skate park underneath um, too the far Washington away. Street. Too far. Oh. That's too far. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mm -hmm. This is maybe a little off topic, and so just tell me if we need to talk about it another time. But uh, what about the post office? That that memo just came in this packet about that, and I don't know if you guys know any more than the, what was related to us and what the potential plans are. No, I have a call into the postmaster um, asking for a follow-up meeting to the letter on that. Um, but um, we think it's important to have a post office downtown. We think that's an important structure, and um, we're following the intent of what the letter said, which is we want to pursue discussing it with them. Kind of caught, caught us off guard. Yeah. 
as much as you did. So. Well, they sent it to us right in the middle of the holiday season where we had about two days to turn, to turn around. It seemed kind of an interesting um, uh, time for it to arrive. Fortunately, we caught it and were able to, uh, to respond. So I did hear somebody say, well, that would be a nice police headquarters, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was an interesting except for the parking part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> except for there's no parking at all. All right, right, I'm at the end of my list. Any other comments? Anything else that you want to draw out of these folks on uh, <laughs> while you're drawing? Yes. No, we just really appreciate your thoughts, and as we continue to march down the road, we'll continue to want to listen. I apologize for clarity. That the, there's still ongoing conversations with the county and the state regarding the butterfly lot. Yes. Ongoing conversations. Okay. Thank there you. are? Yes. Something has changed from when we were told that, that, that over everybody's dead body, would we ever get the... Uh, oh, my uh, Judge Bearden. Yeah, that's well, right. The dead Judge bodies Bearden. are all being moved yeah. these days when they look <laughs> at budgets. So, I think we you know. continue to look for outside-the-box solutions towards <laughs> yeah. moving towards our goals. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. Okay. George, do you have something you want well, to well, say? I was just going to ask, can we do the consent calendar, or is your items... You something know, we normal? could do... we got to go there that's, anyway. That's a... That's a good idea. If well, there's... Are people... That there may be a few things that... Are there uh, things people are going to want to pull from the consent calendar? I had well, thought about like, that. Oh, well, hold on. For a second. Take Sorry. a look, and if nobody has any objection. I don't think I, there's anything... I would, I would suggest that we leave it for over I mean, there, since that's our typical way of doing things. general principles, I'd rather not... Uh, it, not. I mean, unless that, we were not going to That's an there. objection, so yeah. we'll save it. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to share with my, um, here's the table that I'll be leaving at 8.15 tonight. I have uh, child, grandchild care duty. All right. <laughs> and we expect the forum to last for probably an hour or more. So it, uh, that's one reason why you might want to think about whether you want to get rid of any, any of, of this in the next 20 minutes. There are probably well, several. So you want to do item five then? Why not do the council officers? Does that matter? Or council officers. Yeah. Do you want to do council officers? <laughs> I th Mayor, I, I think, think we should under the code, I think council officers has to be done Over at there. 730. Okay. Well, then, I tried. The she did. Thank you for trying to save our time. All right. I'm going to close the meeting then. So we're not going to.